Thank you for joining us wherever you are. This podcast episode is brought to you by the Old Ways Actual Play Team. This actual play uses the 7th edition Call of Cthulhu tabletop role-playing game rules by Chaos. This actual play is performed by adults and in an adult setting. While we try very hard to stick to language for all ages, listeners should know that this podcast may include mature themes. All content, including names, places, events, companies, and etc. that may bear resemblance to entities living or dead is strictly coincidental. My name is Michael Diamond, and for tonight's game, I will be your keeper. Thank you for joining us again on another episode of the Old Ways Podcast. I'm your keeper, Keeper Michael, and we return to Horror on the Orient Express in Venice. And so we'd like to thank all of our listeners at the top of the show uh, and our backers, our Patreon backers, who do so much to support us and help move along the story in their own way for good or for ill. And so we'll give an introduction now to our cast, which is available to my right. Hello, this is Mike, and I'm playing James Robert Fraser, and I've been to the library. You have, and it's been fruitful. Fantastic. And to his right. Hi, I'm Rena. I play Lady Elizabeth Fitzroy, and uh, I've been reading someone's diary. And it seems the gentleman's been named Guillaume. Shocking. Fantastic coincidence. At the end of the table. Hi, my name's Giles, and I'm playing Simon Griffith, and I'm a third wheel in a boat. Must be fair, right? This isn't the first time you've been a third wheel, or the first time you've been in a boat, so it should be old hat, yeah? Does Mr. Griffith right? Hi, I'm Miranda, and I play Maggie Bellinger, and while I may be enjoying this gondola ride, my mind is still on those saucy photos Paul had. It does seem that the doctor, or soon-to-be doctor, Paul, is um, perhaps a bit of a photo collector. Of all sorts of things. Last but most certainly not least. I'm Martin and I'm playing Richard Courtney. And uh, Richard's still wondering who on earth spoke to him the other night and who hit him round the head. I think for some answers, Richard, all you need to do is look into a mirror. And so we open the curtain this early afternoon aboard a gondola. Uh, uh, The lapping of the canal waters close by the darkly painted uh, boat. It's three quarters full. The uh, gondolier is working his magic with the long rod, pressing it into the canal area and sweeping around and moving you back upstream. It's a different experience. You came down here on a boat which had a little bit more steam, so to speak. You have seen the differences between the wakes of the boats and the movements. There is some peace in this for you, Miss Bellinger, even though the water is um, still a little less than, say, fresh smelling. It is nice to get out and you are allowed to push those sensory pieces back a little bit because your ears and eyes are picking up on all of the finery and the ages of work that has gone into Venice's construction. It's truly beautiful in the daytime light. Maggie would be snapping some pictures here and there. Quite a lovely city, isn't it, Richard? Simon? Uh, yes, I, uh, I think it's quite delightful. Um, one can almost uh, tune out that smell um, from time to time. But um, yes, it's a beautiful place. Well, it's very wet. It's an astute observation, Simon, yes. Well, I grew up in mountains. This is all built around roads of water. And everything here is moist. Um, sir, um, Mr. Gond- Gondolier. Mm-hmm. My companions and I, we are actually here not just sightseeing, but also doing some research into um, Napoleon... Uh, when he in, in invaded the area, um, is do you know of any museums nearby? Maybe we could could take a look at. Oh, he looks around and spots of um, cultural importance around here. <sighs> well, he slows his movement a bit of the pole and then uh, extends a wide arm out towards. The row that you see of, of buildings as you're continuing your journey back up the canal. Culture 
can be found in any of these places. The the piazza there, uh, near the hotel. I would absolutely walk the Galleria area. Fantastic, he says with a smile. But if you're looking for Napoleon, you should understand that it's a it is not a pleasant time in our history. Yes, but sometimes the most interesting ones to learn about are unpleasant times. I tend to agree. I confess, I don't get much time to spend in the library. Uh, yes, uh, well, libraries are one thing, reading and such. I just, I like to see more uh, physical items. Hmm. Well, perhaps the horses. Yes, um, the Basilica, San Marcos Basilica, has four amazing bronze horses from Constantinople. It's uh, near the entrance. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Captivate travelers from here all over the world. That's quite interesting. We're actually headed to Constantinople eventually. Truly. It's been a difficult time for their people. Yes, it it seems to be a a difficult time for many peoples. Mm. Yes, uh, after the war... Italy needed time to uh, reforge herself. Uh, she is still doing this today. But um, the war between Greece and, and the Ottoman Empire was difficult. And I, I still wonder for the future. Well, what do you think, gentlemen? Is there any particular area you'd like to see more of? I, I heard you had good gelato here. Oh, yeah, yes, indeed. Indeed. I can uh, take us up the canal here. Perhaps, uh, perhaps you're hungry. I, th- I think that would be good. Yes, quite. Um, it would be nice, maybe, to stop for a few minutes and uh, take some refreshments. Wonderful, wonderful. He continues up the way a little bit. Probably about ten or fifteen minutes later, you get to another Rio. So the gondolier explains that. While the main portion of this waterway is called the canal, the that the Grand Canal that everyone refers to, he says that the mistake that many people, travelers make, is that they call all of the exterior waterways canals, and when they locally they call them rios, uh, to show the difference between the two. He takes you through this water taxi uh, down a couple of thinner rios. So these would be considered basically like side streets and you get into uh, an area you're not necessarily completely familiar with you get off the grand canal and he makes two or three turns you you, you definitely think that you're north of where you were perhaps back towards where the train let you off at and he brings the gondola closer towards one of these piers and i'd like all of you to make a spot hidden move is a 37 under 41 for me. 27 under 64, so that's a hard success. Mm, excellent. Simon? And that's a 2 under 45 for an extreme. So some excellent rolls. As you guys pull up to this pier and that black gondola gets ready to stop, there are a couple of gentlemen there at the stop waiting to assist it into position. It's not them that you're so much concerned about. There is a secondary level to this pier area, what would be considered the street level, or the normal level where people would walk on sidewalks. And there are probably two or three um, men in the nearby houses that are clearly wearing black shirts in the same style of uniform that they wore in Milan. And it's worse than that, Simon. Behind you, across this Rio, there are four or five of them. In fact, it looks like that might be a housing development used to hold Mussolini's men. The gondolier doesn't seem to pay very much attention to them. He steps out of the boat, makes sure that it's secured against the pier, and then he reaches out a hand for you, Miss Bellinger, to offer you to get off the boat. Oh, is this where the tour ends? No, 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 no. There is uh, just down this way. He points down one of the areas, alleyways between the building. There is this uh, gelato that uh, your assistant speaks of. I assume the man is your assistant. He was sitting behind you. 
Yes, thank you. He smiles. I make eye contact with Simon and then like slowly go to put my hand up to get out of the boat unless someone stops me. Uh, be careful with your camera. Of course, Richard. Thank you for being concerned about my camera. Question, are we getting out on the side with the black shirts or are there black shirts on both? There are black shirts on both sides. So there's black shirts directly on the street level above you. So you'll step out onto the pier level. There's a small staircase or a ramp area that goes up to the street level. On that street level, they're not looming by the pier waiting to pounce. They're just off a bit, maybe 10 or so yards. You pick them up near a house. It looks like there's a, not a cafe, but someone has a a small table and, and patio chairs behind the apartment complex and they're milling about. But what you also notice is as you get into position, for them to stop the gondola from behind you beyond the, over the Rio on the other side, there are quite a few more of them. Miss Maggie, I'm sure we're fine. We're, we're, we're just tourists. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't need my fears uh, calm or anything. I'm just getting out of a boat. Mr. Professor? Um, yes, well, I'm, uh, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, yes, we should, um, go and, go and get some ice cream, I think. I believe it's called gelato here, and it's quite different from ice cream. Indeed, indeed, the gondolier speaks up. Right, well, um, let's, let's hurry along. So, uh, you all get out of the boat, then? We wouldn't want it to get cold on us now, would we? <laughs> well, I'm gonna go ahead and play the part of the, uh, good servant. Hmm. Very well. The gondolier gives you slight directions. And says, uh, as he uh, tucks into his pocket and pulls out a pack of cigarettes, he says, uh, if you'd uh, give me perhaps uh, just a, a short rest, uh, I should be ready to take you uh, wherever you'd like to go next. A couple of other people get out as well. Of course, that'd be fantastic. About how long would you need, sir? Oh, no, no, no more than 15 minutes, of course. But uh, if, uh, if you have half an hour to spare, perhaps I... <laughs> i be allowed a lunch today. Miss Maggie, Professor, would that be 30 minutes for gelato uh, all right for this gentleman here? Oh, of course, of course. Every man should be afforded a lunch. I will take care of everything else. I will follow you and uh, settle with the gentleman. I will go ahead and tip the gondolier right now and say we'll be back here in about 30, sir. Ah, marvelous. As we... Uh, walk away, I would say to Simon, that was quite a good impression of Mr. Fraser you were doing there. He rubs off on me. The gelato shop is not simply constrained to the very special Italian dessert. It's more of a sweets shop as well. And so you get a fairly wide array of, uh, we'll say, chocolates. Some probably are more French-inspired than they are Italian. But it is like walking into a complete and utter terrifying experience if you were a dentist. Richard, this looks fantastic. All of it. They have quite the selection here. I'm, I, yes. Um, some of it reminds me of my childhood. Uh, with some aniseed twists and pear drops. Delightful. Yes, I don't know where to start. Professor, Miss Maggie, I'm more than happy if you buy extra to carry it for you. Well, there's no need for that, I'm sure. I mean, it's not like we're going to be buying half the shop, is it? (laughs) We should um, buy some extra to bring back for Lady Elizabeth. I believe she is rather fond of chocolate. Ah, you know this to be true. Yes, yes, That's 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 a lovely thought. Anyone follow us? I suppose if someone was standing guard outside, they would know. Or are they going to pop their head out and maybe look? I would imagine that at least Simon and also Maggie and probably also Richard would be kind of alert as we were walking down the way to the gelato place to see if any attention was being tracked on us. Simon is playing the part of the dutiful servant and watching out for his two charges. Very good, sir. Make me a spot hidden roll. 44 under 45. Mm-hmm. 
the streets seem relatively quiet. In fact, they're bereft of any children. Yellowy here is peaceful. There's only common foot traffic, maybe two or three people. It starts to raise the hackles on the back of your neck. Do they have seats here, or is it just a takeaway-only sort of affair? No, there are seats as well. Hmm. Well then, Maggie, um, uh, we should take a seat. Um, Coffee? Tea? Coffee would be fine. Richard will try and get the eye of somebody. Yeah, get the uh, eye of the young lady behind the counter. Yes, sir. Uh, is, is, is it possible to get some uh, drinks and some uh, gelato, please? Hmm, uh, if you want a cafe, she points just across the small campo there, the little square that's here. Uh, you can get uh, coffee and other cafes. Ah, okay. Uh, but we can we can sit here, we can uh, enjoy your gelato here, mm-hmm. and then go mm-hmm. yes, get coffee. Okay, okay. Professor, will it be tea as you request it? Oh, well, tea would be fantastic, thank you. And coffee, Miss Maggie? Yes, that would be fine. Simon's going to go over to the cafe that was gestured at. Mm-hmm. But he's going to uh, lean down to whisper to the professor, there's no one around here, no children, at a candy shop. It's unusual, isn't it? I, I should inquire. Um, um, what flavor of ice cream would you like? He says, trying to mask that conversation. Vanilla, please, if you would, sir. I'll be right back with your drinks. Uh, yes, thank you. And Richard says to the person at the counter, um, yes, I, we, we will take a, a vanilla, please. Hmm. And, um, I, yeah, yes, I, and uh, two van- vanilla. Richard's making his mind up. He's getting quite stressed by what Simon's told him. Uh, and, uh, Maggie, what, what, um, what, what ice cream, uh, I mean, gelato would you, uh, would you like? I, I will take the same. Um, yes, um, <laughs> not very difficult. Um, three vanilla if we can, please. Okay. She begins turning to prepare the desserts. Simon, you're going across to get coffees or teas? That is correct. Okay. You walk across this smaller courtyard. It's not really even a a square. It's not big enough. It's no more than maybe 10 to 15 square yards in area. It's not very big, but it's big enough. And the cafe beyond has a few gentlemen, older, conversating, smoking cigarettes, relaxing their way through their day. It seems like a very sleepy area of Venice. I tip my hat to them as I go up to the counter. They give you subtle nods. They're um, definitely getting a tourist read from you, but they're not rude by any means. Am I conveying properly the not upper class person? (laughs) They look like regular old average people. That's fine. You get the drinks ordered and get them uh, on their way. They'll have to come here to drink it. They don't have takeaway cups like they do in the future. But it'll take a little while to repair it, and the uh, staff say that there's a small table outside that in chairs you could use if you'd like. Richard and Maggie, I would like the two of you to give me listen rolls. Can do. Uh, 41 under 77, so regular success. Um, 36 under 50, so another regular success. The both of you hear something that you are fairly certain you're not supposed to. You hear someone step into the door who's trying to be quiet. Is the door, I'm assuming, then behind us? Yeah. Maggie turns to look. You see a uh, rather young gentleman Very striking features, attractive, uh, longer hair, uh, sort of uh, a little curly, and he wanders into the shop, seemingly carefree. I would just watch what he's doing to see if it's suspicious that he came in so quietly, but if he's not raising any other suspicion. It doesn't seem like that for now. He walks up towards the counter and gives you a reasonable amount of space, Miss Ballinger, perhaps two or three feet. He nods at you, Professor, 
buongiorno. Um, uh, yes, good. Uh, I'm assuming it's still morning, is it? Almost afternoon. It's it's about 11 o'clock at this point. Richard will probably say, yeah, well, uh, yes, good afternoon. <laughs> he smiles wildly and uh, he turns to you, Maggie. And he says a little bit, a little bit louder, buongiorno. Um, buongiorno to you as well. Hmm. He says something in Italian to you. Well, um, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I'm from America. I don't, I don't speak Italian, English, or uh, some French. English is fine. You hear the words come out of his mouth as if there's scant Italian accent left. Hmm. Wow, you speak quite you, your accent. It's quite well. Yes. I've worked very hard over the years to prepare myself for any matters in any linguistics as necessary. That's very impressive. Thank you. Would you like to join us, to sit with us, enjoy some gelato? Oh, I would love to. He nods at the woman behind the counter, and she nods back at him. Your gelatos are ready, Professor. Ah, I, um, thank you. Richard turns to the young man. Uh, would you like a vanilla also? No. Oh. We have three. I actually prefer lemon. Um, and another lemon, please, Richard says to the uh, counter assistant. Yes, the assistant nods very quickly. So, uh, may I ask, he looks at you, Maggie, what brings you to Venice? Well, I'm traveling across Europe. I, uh, I am an, ex- an aspiring travel writer and I would like to see the sights and I've made some companions along my way which is it's quite nice because otherwise I would be traveling by myself. We've been to several different places. We've been to Paris and uh, well I started out in London with my Aunt Edith mm. and, and then we we're here now in Venice. Oh fantastic. I have been in London recently myself. Oh did you find it enjoyable? He smiles very widely. Weather can be quite dreary. I had a splendid time in London actually. Um, uh, where did you visit? Um, there are some marvelous places there. He turns and looks at you, Professor. For the first time, you get a very uncomfortable feeling, an immediate one. You feel like prey. I visited uh, a few universities, actually. Oh, um, uh, quite. Yes, yes, there are some... Uh... Are you familiar with them? Fantastic universities. Yeah, yes, indeed. And museums as well. I don't suppose you had uh, such fortune as to visit the British Library whilst you were there? Oh, uh, no. Unfortunately, I was a bit busy with some legal matters, you understand. Oh, um, legal matters? Hmm, it's finances. Right. Um, y- yes, I mean, I'm a man of humble origins myself. I know not of such things, but, um, yes. Hmm. He turns back to you, Maggie. The counter girl announces that your gelatos are ready, Richard. I believe this lemon one is for you. Um, uh, sorry, I, I, I don't believe we, uh, we introduced ourselves. Um, no. Uh, Richard. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. He extends his hand. Richard will shake it. Uh, my name is Alexander. Ah, fantastic to meet you. Does Richard sense anything really off about him? It's difficult to phrase the question, really. Yeah. Uh, rel- I mean, visually, no. There's a couple of things that I can give you visually hmm. that are probably important. This man is a very handsome man. He's well put together in all of the physical ways that men of the era would desire. He has an air about him almost. There's something other than the smell of the candy shop here. You're not sure what it is. It's almost a honeyed smell. Would Richard know from the way that he talks whether he's sort of like an upper class person, whether he's built in the military, um, education? I don't know any sort of words or turn of phrase, that sort of stuff. The method that he uses to speak is a little strange. It's almost as if there's a half, maybe a 
an eighth of a second between his words. It's almost like he's calculating every single one. It's almost, ro- I, I, would, I wouldn't say robotic as a term that you would understand. Um, were you uh, born in Venice or uh, um, some other part of Italy? Oh, no, I wasn't born in Italy at all. Oh. How is your gelato? Um, uh, yes, it's uh, uh, very smooth, I believe the word is. Hmm. Yes, that's the right word to describe it. You said, he turns to you, Maggie, you said that you traveled to Paris. Did you come via train? Uh, yes, uh, we did. Uh, we've been traveling on the Orient Express. It's the best way to travel across Europe. Everyone knows that. It's common knowledge. Hmm. Everyone. I have not had a chance to um, board the train just yet. I highly recommend it. I should take you up on that. Uh, Maggie, I'd like you to make me a power roll. Okay. Now I'm pretty powy. Indeed. So I rolled a two under 75. Fantastic. you getting a bit of brain freeze, probably from a gelato. He smirks. My apologies. What I mean to say is I have more traveling to do. And if the endorsement of someone so beautiful is worthy enough, then I shall perhaps investigate the train myself. Oh, oh of, of course. Yes, I, I, I think you would like it quite well. Hmm. Well, I... Uh, I hope your travels so far have been without difficulties. Yes, they've been rather pleasant. Good, good. And uh, you said you were uh, traveling with a group of companions, you said? Yes, they aren't, aren't all here with us now. They're here and there. You, you know, we all have our own businesses to uh, attend to, and we enjoy different things. Some people enjoy reading, and other people enjoy gelato and gondolas. Absolutely. And you're from America, so tell me, um, does the uh, does Mussolini bother you? Uh, I, you know, I I don't know much about Mussolini. Well, all the better. It's um, politics is uh, a sticky matter. Horribly boring, yes. <laughs> he laughs probably a second too long. Great, <laughs> super. <laughs> You're both traveling. That's wonderful. Um, uh, is this a uh, a holiday, perhaps? A long vacation for uh, two of you? Yeah. Well, yes, so- something like that. As I said, I'm I'm an aspiring a travel writer, so this is partially work and partially also vacation. I, my father wants me to settle down, but I really I, I want to travel. But I promised him maybe after this trip. Well, uh, forgive me for saying so, but. Uh, I agree with you. You should travel. There's no reason for you to do anything other than enjoy the life you have in front of you. I agree with that sentiment completely. Indeed. And you, sir? Uh, Yes, yes. I'm uh, I'm traveling with my companion here, and um, our other friends are interested in uh, in, uh, um, uh, a wide variety of um, of different subjects. Um, Oh, uh, <laughs> yes, one of the others is rather into their food, and um, um, we've 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 heard that uh, some of the, uh, the the delicacies here are absolutely um, um, marvelous. And uh, uh, we're uh, glass. Um, there is a um, uh, 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 somebody interested in um, um, antiquities, and I, I believe you have a particularly special um, uh, glass blowing here from uh, from from centuries ago, and. Mm. Uh, Yes, I, I'm sorry. I, when I say you, I mean you're you're not from Italy, are you? Um, but uh, no, sir. I, uh, th- in, indeed, that's that's what we're visiting. Well, I think it's fantastic. I appreciate the gelato. Uh, yes, my pleasure. Perhaps I'll see you again. Oh, oh yeah, yes, yes. I'm sure we'll we'll, we'll look out for you, and then perhaps we'll <laughs> see you, um, um, perhaps on a gondola or or in a restaurant or something. Hmm. He excuses himself from the table, giving you, Maggie, one simple but reasonable bow of courtesy. Maggie doesn't entirely know how to handle that, so she would maybe just nod. There's probably about a two-second heartbeat that passes after he leaves the shop. The feeling of him finally leaves the room. 
it's an uneasy feeling that you finally get to bottle. And that is the feeling of being prey. You feel it finally now run around your neck and between your shoulders. Aki, I, I do believe um, he was almost suggesting he knew where we were from and where we'd been. Did, did you get a similar feeling? Yes, I did. I get the feeling he was in London at the same time as us. Quite. I mean, why Why would you come in and, and announce yourself like that? Surely you would want to remain hidden if you were, um, I don't know, trying to watch us rather than walk right up to us and pretty much tell us. I, 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 I don't know. Well, we, we must find Simon. Richard, have you seen a cat play with a mouse before he finally eats it? Yes, yes, I have. Perhaps he's just batting us around, waiting. Hmm. Well, let's hope we don't find one of our heads detached and uh, brought to some owner somewhere like they have a, a propensity to do. I, it's not a, not a, no. I do think we should go find our friend. Uh, yes, yes, I think you're right. You step out of the gelato shop. Just across the courtyard there, uh, Simon is settling the final of three drinks down on a cafe table. But before he does, it is reasonable to give him a hard spot hidden roll. And this is my lucky day of spot hidden, except for that first one. Hmm. That would be an 18 under 45. That is a hard. Yeah, so as you're settling that third cup down and getting ready to look back over towards the gelato shop, you see a man roughly six feet tall, muscular build, not for strength. He has a very specific gait. He has a boxer's build, like a 20s boxer's build. And he is walking very confidently away from the shop towards an alleyway parallel across your vision to the left. He's noticeable because he's definitely not Italian, just from his overall look. He's way too tall. He's well over six feet. And there's a bronzeness to his skin that you can see here in near midday light. And you didn't notice him inside the shop when you were over there earlier. Nope. I... Note that he's out of place, but I'm um, waiting for the professor and Miss Maggie to come. And a few moments later, they exit the shop. Then I wave them over. Okay. Uh, hello, Simon. Uh, Miss Maggie, your coffee? Oh, thank you. Professor, here's your tea. They're both mm-hmm. hot, just came off. I hope you're uh, satisfied. Is there anything I can get you? Uh, uh, yeah, y- yes. Um, did you did you see a man exit the uh, the gelato? I did. Oh, did you remember my vanilla gelato, sir? Oh, uh, uh, y- yes, it's here. It's here. Um, okay, thank you. Mm. Had had a I I don't I don't a line of questioning that was most invasive, and uh, um, he appeared to I oh uh, Maggie um, I, I my words fail me. Uh, yes, he came in and he spoke a perfectly fluent English with next to no accent and. He said he'd been working on that for a while, and he asked us how we were traveling and if it was by train, and he said that he had just been in London, and that he it seemed like he was in London at the same time that we were, and he also made it sound like he was going to be on the train with us as well, um, but he kind of covered that up. He backed off of that a little bit. It seemed like a game of cat and mouse, and we were the mice. He, he, he mentioned universities as well, didn't he, and, and museums. Um, yes. I mean... Uh, why? why? Yes, yes. Why would you mention? I mean, nobody visits a university. It's ridiculous, Professor. It's because he's following us. But, but I mean, who would who would walk into a shop and announce their intentions in such a a, a brutal manner? Someone who is not scared of you. He likes to play with his food. We're, we're, we're not food. You are to him. I met his kind before. 
you describe him to Jim, and I'm sure he'll say the same thing. You too, and pardon me, Miss Maggie, I do appreciate your Americanness as much as my own, but I don't think it's going to be safe, at least here in Venice, for the two of you to be out without either Jim or myself. Is that all right? Yes, I, uh, that's, that's, we're happy to have you along with us, Simon. I saw the gentleman. I don't know what he spoke to you, and I would love to pick your brain on that later. Please drink up your tea and coffee before it gets cold. What I can tell you from the way he walked, he has confidence. He has no fear of you. No fear of anybody around him right now. And that's dangerous. I met his kind in the war. They either died or they were scary as hell. Oh, you have that right. Think here. I am not an educated man. But this man walked into the shop, practically threatened you, and told you he was going to the places you'd been. Oh, he also asked us about Mussolini and our travels, and I told him that we'd been Paris, but I skipped Milan, uh, and then I told him we were here. That was probably wise, Miss Maggie. Um, Thank you, Simon. I don't know this man. I wish I could have spoken with him, but I have a feeling this is not good. I think it might be best that you did not speak with him. I, I've got my knife. One does not speak with a knife, Simon. I do. So I'm going to pause this scene here and we'll move the camera to the library where Lady Elizabeth and Mr. Fraser had the opportunity to continue to investigate should they so choose. And so I guess I would like to re-up that question and ask, are you staying or are you going? Um, what do you think, Your Ladyship? Uh, we have a, a couple of uh, very significant leads we've already found now. Do you think there's anything else to be to be gained here? Possibly, uh, I don't know if we want to find out about uh, any of these uh, people mentioned in the, the diary that uh, that you found. Or perhaps we could find out a, a little bit about the San Marco Basilica and what this, uh, this black paving stone you spoke of is. Yes, I was rather thinking we could uh, find out more about the Basilica. It would help to know some things before we just go marching in, digging up paved stones and so on. Yes, perhaps um, there are some sort of floor plans of the of the place or, or the like, or uh, opening hours or uh, something that can uh, give us assistance in, in determining how and when we might be able to, uh, I suppose... Uh, at the end of the day, we're, we're, um, we're despoiling the church. <laughs> well, we can see what we can find. Might as well make use of our time, but I don't think we need to spend too much more time. We do have some good leads, and we should spend our time perhaps figuring out what to do next. Uh, yes, I, I have a, 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 a message, and an, an errand that I, I need to run uh, before the day's out as well, I uh, waiting on a communication from London. Right. So I'm going to look for anything I can find on the Basilica, Mike. Um, all right. So I suppose then what would you... Like, just information about the Basilica? Um, In general, or...? Yeah, Any anything, I guess, general first, because we want to know what it looks Certainly. like and... People, when they build churches, tend to write a lot about the churches, especially the fancy churches, because oh, yes. it's a big monument to their architectural prowess or whatever. Mm -hmm. So wh whatever I can generally find on it. The Basilica holds the mummified namesake of the church. It was removed from Alexandria in 829 AD. The exterior is carved, colored, and inlaid. So it has, as you saw as you pass, an absolutely wonderful exterior. You can only imagine at its interior. It's colored and inlaid with marble and mosaic. The four horses of Constantinople stand above the entrance. They are relatively unchanged by time, given the fact that they're cast uh, and they're bronze. They were cast in the time of Nero, except that their uh, golden skins are covered with the uh, 
mostly tourists' autographs now. You'd probably get that information from a couple of different local texts that they have been, quote, um, vandalized. Within the Basilica, you read that there's marble and tapestry and velvet, precious metals. The ceilings are covered with gem-encrusted mosaics and walls are painted, carved or gilded, as many of them are statues and pillars. The floor is composed of variegated and patterned marble. Lots of marble. You learn from the librarian, a ticket is required to enter the choir, although no fee is charged. And it's supposed to be the area of St. Mark's Remains is uh, encrusted with uh, hundreds of pearls, garnets, amethysts, sapphires. It's an absolute wonder. It's something that the people of Venice hold in very high regard. Is there anything about this black stone? Black stone? Uh, the paving that hmm. you mentioned he buried it under. Not in the information you gather or the program. Okay. Was there, um, in the diary, was there, was there um, reference to the specific part of the basilica that this paving stone was in? The chapel of St. Isidoro. There's the black paving stone in the chapel of St. Isidoro, is what the handout says. Yeah. Can I maybe have a look, look and see if we can find what part of the... Uh, the cathedral that that is, or if it's a separate part or anything like that. Okay. It does appear that it is a different section of the basilica. It is within the basilica somewhere. And you would probably know this at least a little bit, given the um, somewhat religious practices of your family, Lady Elizabeth, um, given that it is a large and well-loved church, it is likely to be fairly protected given the fact that somewhere within there are hundreds of gemstones all over the place. Perhaps we should uh, scout it out, so to speak. How does one obtain a ticket? <laughs> the librarian tells you that uh, tickets can be obtained at the entrance. Marvelous. Indeed. Perhaps we should pay a visit, Mr. Fraser? Shall we do a little sightseeing, your ladyship? So are you going to go directly, or are you going to make any other library use rolls while you're here? Just trying to think what else. Or anything else you might think of to look for. Um, I mean, we've kind of found what we are looking for. Yeah, I'm guessing there isn't anything else on Guillaume because I would have found it when I was originally looking. Yeah. Well, not, not to belabor the point, but you were looking for items on in related to Napoleon's arrival and you found mm -hmm. a something that this... Capitaine Dubois had written. You've not actually looked for anything on him. In that case, I would want to take a look for anything on these Venetian fools that he talks about. Like, was there a cult at the time? Because we know when he was there. Was there a religious group that was causing trouble? Was it just a local band of people trying to kick Napoleon out? What, what was it? Okay. So that's what I'd like to look for. That is a library use role. So I'm 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 more than happy to uh, assist with that, or um, I could look up and see if there's anything on this fellow Boucher, who seems to be the person that actually brought uh, the leg from Paris to to Venice. All right. Twenty nine under eighty. You begin your search in earnest. If you would like to make a, a different library use role, Mr. Fraser, you can. I shall do that. Is, is Ernest going to help me? <laughs> this is not exactly his uh, special subject. No, it, it is an investigation, though, so... Uh, and that's a 38 under, uh, over 20. Not particularly fruitful. You happen upon, Lady Elizabeth, something in regards to your searches. So you're searching for this group of fools, these idiots who might have come around during that time. But you do find a different diary entry. In fact, you find what looks to be a rather private diary that's here. You must say it is filled with, well, some rather salacious material. It's, it's definitely a private diary, uh, lady. Very private, although not so private anymore now that you have it in your hands. And... Uh, about 80% of the book, this private diary, is filled, we'll say, with um, 
very colorful pictures and descriptions. There are a few different writers in it. It appears that Captain Dubois had um, perhaps lovers write in it as well of their experiences. So there are multiple authors. It's enough to probably make you blush at some of the direct descriptions of acts which were performed by the captain and his many friends. But that said, after reading through some of the pages, you do find a diary entry which does pique your interest. And so this diary entry is rather lengthy and it is from November 15th. So I'll get that to you. Venice is such a salacious place. Is that in 1797 again? Yeah. Uh huh. Does it remind me at all of what we learned about the Comtes group back in Paris? They had all their little orgy cults going on. This does not seem it- cultish anyway. Okay. Like, this is the portion that you find. So um, you find something dated uh, the 16th. So if you would. Uh, Give this a read. The Diary of Capitaine Dubois, 15 November, 1797. Returned home last night, 14th, most satisfied with my actions in dispelling the riot. As Voltaire said, I have only ever made one prayer to God, a very short one. O Lord, make my enemies ridiculous. And God granted it. It was very satisfying to see the looks on these fool Venetian faces as they were bundled off to prison. I hope their visit teaches them the comparative values of reason and superstition. At home, I found my Cherie struck by the plague. The poor little waif is as brave as one of my soldiers, but her leg has crippled and twisted overnight. She is only two years old. She should not be thus afflicted. I returned to the prison and questioned the delegation leaders. They told me to talk to Boucher. So I questioned him again, late last night. I also poured over that strange artificial limb he so prizes. My leg ached as I handled it, and aches to this moment. Is it that the mere sight of this truncated limb in porcelain stirred some vestigial memory in my agitated mind, so that it felt as if my own left leg were amputated? I took the leg from Boucher and tried to break it. It would not break. I tried to burn it. It would not burn. It is not porcelain, but some strange, unyielding substance that not even diamond will mark. That damn delegation was right. It is something evil. Although I defend Boucher. He has merely carried it here. I am not going to admit my folly to those Italian fools. I realized what to do at last. The idea was so fitting that I burst out into a loud laugh. Last night... I buried that cursed leg in secret within the San Marco Basilica, under the black paving stone in the chapel of St. Isidoro. To my delight this morning, my dear little Cherie has recovered. She is as bright as ever. Today I hear from the medical staff, too, that the plague is steadily abating in virulence. After that, it's probably it's probably taken you uh, an hour to get to the more private diary entry. And now you have some fairly pertinent pointers that say that the Basilica needs to be on your list next. Is it possible to get, um, to find uh, some sort of plan or drawing or anything of the, of the layout of the uh, Basilica? They don't offer floor plans of the Basilica. Uh, you could probably at best get a rough drawing if you went and toured it yeah, just by hand. I'm thinking, yeah, I could just do it from memory. Do we know, um, based on what we asked the librarian for about the Basilica, uh, is it still functioning as a church? Meaning, are they going to have 6 p.m. mass, in which case we'd want to wait? Or is it more of a tourist destination they keep open longer we don't want to go and show up in the middle of mass that would not be helpful the piazza outside it is busy and regularly visited I believe if the data I have in front of me is correct that it is still in use at this time so you you could have any number of people within it at any point in time 
given that it's a, a Catholic church. And what time of day is it currently? It's about 4 p.m. Well, Mr. Fraser, I don't think we'll be able to make a visit today, hmm. seeing as it is still a functional Catholic church, and they're likely to have mass at 6 p.m. Ah, uh, yes. At this moment, hmm. they're likely preparing for the services, so we will perhaps make a visit tomorrow. Yes, two hours is, is, is not really long enough, I don't, don't think, Your Ladyship. Uh, um, do you think there's likely to be a mass in the morning as well? There might be. I don't know how the Italians do their services. You do have a librarian who's likely a local nearby. She might be able to shed light on that. I'll ask her when mass is held at the Basilica. She brightens and says that uh, weekly mass is held on Saturdays and Sundays only. The locals, like myself, are more concerned about preserving the Basilica rather than using it. And so many of the other uh, weekly service portions will happen at more local churches. But of course, we all enjoy going to the Basilica on Sunday. And Saturday, of course. What day of the week is it right now? Lordy. Uh, I'm going to say it's a Tuesday. Well. Convenient. It seems that uh, fate is smiling on us and we do have the time after all. Very well. Shall we, Mr. Fraser? Indeed, Your Ladyship. Let's. Very well. And so you're going to leave the library now. You did pull probably uh, more than, I'd say this lately, but upon leaving, it is a little hard to put Capitaine de Bois' diary completely to mental rest. He's very, he's a very apt writer. Yeah, that or whoever was uh, ghost writing for him was. Ghoul writing. Well, perhaps. So were the two of you going to travel there or are you going to head back to the hotel? I think uh, we're going to the Basilica. Yes, I think a scouting mission is in order. Very well. Then I'm going to pop over really quick to our once gondoliered investigators have finished their gelato and now their tea and uh, are probably going to get headed back to the hotel, I would imagine, given the time of day. And unless we want to go see those horses outside of the Basilica. Yes. Well, you'd have to take a gondolier to get back there anyway. Well, he was waiting for us. Mm hmm. I assume it's been about half an hour. It has. So perhaps he could um, take us there. That sounded interesting. Certainly. Question How far is the Basilica from our hotel? It's actually right next door. So this would be perfect. Let's do that. The gondolier takes you out a different direction of the canal, the little Rio that you're in. And. He continues to take you north, which is a little strange because you're fairly certain that the hotel is back south. In this gondolier ride, there are no other passengers, it's just the three of you. And you continue to wind your way north until he works the boat back east. Again, taking these little rios different places. You are getting to see a lot of the, what we would call, regular residential portions of Venice. And while they are nice, there's... There's no real opulence here. This is, seems like quite the scenic route, Richard. Yes, quite. I mean... Where are we headed, sir? Yes, uh, this is... Uh, this seems like a much less uh, popularly traveled way. Mm -hmm. He nods. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, it is for a reason, though. You will see. Oh, okay. He... Makes a final turn on a very small Rio, and you see up ahead the Grand Canal, massive in front of you as everything is opened wide to traffic. And as he turns onto it, you see a very beautiful bridge. Oh, as promised. And he ex extends his hand out and says, See, eh? the Rialto. Beautiful, eh? Yes, it is. Maggie will get out her camera to take some photos. The Rialto is beautiful, and it is packed with people, of course, many of whom are embraced in, in loving gestures with one another. But as you take those photos, Maggie, you begin to feel that sense that something is not right. Mm -hmm. It's a creeping sense of doom that tickles its way up your legs and into your heart. 
Mm-hmm. And as you pull the camera back down, you realize the Grand Canal is black. It's slick and dark with an oil colored. And it reminds you very deeply of that gross colored phlegm that came out of your chest this morning. Richard, Simon, do you see the canal? Does it, is it black? Uh, Richard will look over the side. Richard, it is in fact black. Um, the gondolier looks down. Is it always this color? No. He looks shocked and quite frankly scared. Is there a place we can pull off sooner? And now, I think, would be good. Mm. Miss, monsieur? Uh, well, yeah. I, mean, I appreciate you showing us this bridge, but this water might be dangerous. It, it is still the fastest way to the hotel. Can you keep us closer to the edge, maybe? Of course. Of course. Of course. He rose quite a bit faster. We will get you there. We will get uh, uh, out of this water. And uh, after you clear the Rialto by about 30 or 40 yards, the darkness of the water fades a little bit and then fades even more. And it returns to that dark blue color that Venice is relatively known for at this time. Hmm. Hmm. You see the gondolier shutter keeps going hi um i've never seen anything quite like it it's like um well uh, traveling on a, a lake of oil it's i don't know what that was you pass the gritty palace hotel the one that you were going to stay in and uh, while well, some of you might not know uh Mr. fraser coily supposedly roomed you at before getting you in a different hotel because he's being careful. Soon enough after that, you are back at the slip that you got onto the gondolier on and uh, he deposits you near Piazza San Marco and your hotel. Thank you very much for your service today, sir. Hmm. Yes, uh, I hope you enjoyed the gelato. Richard, pay the man. (laughs) Silently hands him some money. <laughs> some water cash. <laughs> he takes it and smiles. And he says, my name is Giorgio. You may come here at any time and I will be available for you. I promise. That means we paid him very well. Now that you're done destroying the Italian economy, if we could move on. <laughs> I'm kidding. The three of you enter the Piazza San Marco, this massive square, beautiful in its entirety. Uh, And then to your right is the Basilica. And then as you do on your left, there is the well-known faces of your compatriots, Lady Elizabeth and uh, Mr. Fraser. Oh, Lady Elizabeth, Mr. Fraser. Oh, Miss Bellinger. It's strange to run into you. Uh, Lady Elizabeth, we brought you some chocolates. Ah, my face brightens noticeably. Kind. Yes, we got gelato and we ran into the most terrifying man. You do seem to have a way with terrifying men, Miss Bellinger. I did not have a way with this one. Uh, I believe I said his name was Alexander? Uh, Yes, yes he did. And my whole body just goes rigid. And I think all the colour drains out of Mr. Fraser's face as well. And that is, that's a reaction that all three of you will be able to see. There's no hiding that. Did you have a run-in with him as well? That would be my illegitimate half-brother, I believe. So he's here. We're, we're assuming uh, there are there are many many people with that name. Let's 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 not jump to jump to hasty conclusions. Mr. Fraser, as I said as I said this morning, I no longer believe in coincidence. Mm, well. Is there a familial resemblance between <laughs> Lady Elizabeth and Alexander? Because I have a half sibling that I look exactly the likes, like so. Excellent so, question. Yeah. Margaret, I, I'm going to say Edu. I think Edu is a reasonable okay. role for this. And in fact, I am going to spend one of our wonderful hand of fates in the positive 
column for you, Miss Bellinger. Because okay. I think this is a fantastic roll. Oh, uh, that'll be a 44 under 70. Okay. Any interest in making it a hard success? The, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, there. Oh, yeah, I got luck to spare. Let's go for it. Okay. So you take a moment here while Fraser and maybe the professor are talking back and forth about things. You kind of drift a little bit back into the background of the conversation and you can you do to look at a very specific portion of Lady Elizabeth's chin and the line of her jaw and you start superimposing one image over another in your head and you realize that there are a few facial features which they share which are undeniable and you think they might be related it's not just the chin though it's the set of the eyes and where they're at on the skull it's the neckline there's all sorts of things that begin to kind of click into place for you yes well the resemblance isn't striking the resemblance is there i can see it i can i can see more and more of it the longer i look at you marvelous but what is he doing here he is he's very handsome but quite terrifying yes well both of those things tend to run in the family he has implied that he has been following us and also that he would be on the train at the same time as us at some point. And I think he he is, I believe he sides with Mussolini as well because he asked me what I thought of Mussolini. Yes, well, it hardly matters if he's lined in that direction considering his other interests. Lemon gelato? And Lady visibly rattled for the first time ever. Like, you've never seen her look actually shaken. Like, her composure is off. Very visibly off. Fraser Jim makes himself convenient for if uh, her ladyship needs support. Uh, Simon. I saw the man leave the shop. I did not know who he is. I can maybe pick him out in the crowd again because he, he's not Italian. He's definitely not, uh, yeah you know, going to fit in around here, but uh, the way he carried himself, the man has more confidence than most of our captains. Wow. You know, the ones you either, you know, the ones you either end up dead or you end up killing everything in front of you. Yes. I mean, if he, uh, if he has, if he has that kind of bearing, then I suppose uh, he should be barely uh, easy to spot. I'm saying he's dangerous. Either way. Oh, well, uh, yeah, yes. If he's following us, then uh, that seems seems very likely, yes. I personally feel that one of us needs to be around the others at all times. Yes, well, considering I'm quite certain he's the one who tried to kill me on the boat with that summoning circle or whatever it was, not sure that would help either. Um, I, it, it, when when you said other talents, did you mean um, he was also into the occult? I rather think he's into magic. Oh, I. His mother certainly was, as was our. You can see she sort of shudders when she says "our," our father. And you think he's connected to some of these strange happenings the, the, the thing on the boat I have no doubt I was named in the spell according to Miss O'Shea and that rather indicates to me that it was someone with a personal personal vendetta so to speak oh I see Lady E yes Mr. Griffith I'm sorry to interrupt you Professor I just had a thought, because this, this is, sounds like a little bit of backwards magic from the witches and all, but would he have been able to follow you? Is this something that he could have a piece of your clothing or something from wherever and be able to track you across Europe? Is this how he can find us? I have no idea. Although if he knew we were on the Orient Express, he potentially would have just been able to follow the route. 
Yeah, in, in, indeed, I, I don't think it's, it's that difficult to uh, follow us and find us, Simon, to be honest. The thing is, as we get off, we get back on at different times. We're not on a strict schedule. I mean, that's why I'm wondering if he has something else. Either has an incredible spy network or there's something else going well, he, on. Perhaps he just yes, asks he questions. Is, yes, it could be as simple as inquiring, is Lady Elizabeth Fitzroy on the train? And considering my status, it's very difficult for me to go without being noticed. Uh, this is true, I, but I'm, we're just talking magic. You know, you just mentioned he was skilled at it, so I'm thinking, is this a chance? It's entirely possible, Mr. Griffith. I'm attempting to rationalize a few things, which I know is not exactly my greatest skill, but one must remain calm. Lady Elizabeth, you're starting to, to feel physically weak. Like something is draining you. Mr. Fraser, your arm, please. Uh, of course, your ladyship. And his arm is there. Very good. Make con roll. Oh dear. That's not my best stat. I'm looking around. No. <laughs> that's a 96. Okay. That's a fumble. Uh, that's, that's a fumble. Um, You faint. And I will I immediately try and su support her or, uh, and if it becomes uh, apparent that I, I'm unable to keep her upright I will I will lower her gently to the ground um, and ensure she doesn't uh, hit her head or anything like that there's no way you're going to let her fall yeah. um, you'll absolutely be able to shoulder her weight especially given the fact that she was already grabbing onto you moments before she fell you'll have easily enough time to keep her from hitting her head on the, the tiles here which would be disastrous for a number of reasons she can't continue though she's completely unconscious fraser was at that point starting to um look around um you know when she said she was feeling feeling faint and reached for his arm he was uh, already his hackles were, were raised and uh, he was on alert but i think uh, as soon as she go as soon as she goes as soon as she, you know she she loses consciousness his his attention is totally focused on her certainly she needs to get off the street yeah he will um rather unceremoniously um pick her up in his arms we must take a ladyship back to the hotel this, this instant. Do you need a hand, Fraser? Uh, no, I'm 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 all right, Simon. Thank you. I can manage. Are we close enough to the hotel we can walk back, or can I flag a cab? Oh, certainly you can walk back. I mean, for you from the Basilica, it is the walk is maybe two hundred yards at most. All right, I'm going to go get the door and hold it open for Fraser. I guess my question is for the rest of you: Are you are you? Are you accompanying Mr. Fraser and back to the hotel? I think so. With everything that's gone on, I think we would stick together in this moment. Very well. Then I will place the group back at the hotel. I assume then Mr. Fraser is going to do his level best to make Lady Elizabeth comfortable. And he'll call Paul straight away. Certainly. Paul will attend to her. And uh, he does seem concerned at her condition he asks if she's fainted before or recently or not recently this this came very much out of the blue hmm. well um i do know just from my own discussions with her and i'm not willing to speak out of turn of course you understand but the past few weeks have been stressful for her so, yes, indeed. Uh, and I would imagine have, uh, have exacerbated her pre-existing condition. But uh, I'm, I'm sure, um, I'm sure, Mr. Maverhaven, that you, uh, you will be able to uh, provide the, the necessary um, uh, medical expertise to... Mm. I do, I do, but I require a couple of things. Of course, anything. I require that the patient be given time to relax. No fussing, no hovering... She needs quiet. Her nerves are clearly not as, well, not as strong as they could be in the moment. She's been under a tremendous amount of pressure, especially after everything she discussed in Milan. Um, so if I may, as her physician, um, I would ask that we give the lady time. Indeed. And might I suggest no stimulants? No, I do believe uh, we'll be taking a pause to that remedy. And you do understand the last allotment that you got from me came under 
a strict reminder that we would not be continuing such treatments. Thank you, Paul. Your uh, your your care and attention is, as ever, very very much appreciated. Indeed, it will mean that I have to uh, take a pause from some of the other uh, medicinal investigations that I was doing, but I am happy to do so. Hopefully, the uh, the rest of you will be able to get along without Lady Elizabeth for, say, a day or so. Is there anything that I I can do? Anything that I can get for you or for her? We resupplied in Milan, so I am ready to go for what uh, come what may, sir. But um, perhaps a, a pitcher of fresh water. Indeed, yes, sir. and, and per- perhaps um, uh, some soup for uh, uh, for the evening or something something light uh, along those lines. So, yes, uh, but perhaps not for several hours. I would not want to uh, mm-hmm. uh, make any. Uh, presumptions that she will be available for it but but she is going to be all right isn't she he looks at you very directly and says i'll do everything in my power to keep her that way very well um that's that's all anyone can ask i suppose indeed he nods and then stands up and and begins preparing a few things in her room he uh rolls up his sleeves and uh, Mr. Fraser will somewhat reluctantly leave him to it. And I think that is where we will leave it for this week. So thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Horror on the Orient Express. And perhaps next week we will see the inside of a very majestic basilica. Thank you and good night.